Today I'm going to share with you three amazing ways to add high quality, highly customizable film grain to your images in Photoshop. Like these, by the way. I hope you'll enjoy it and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the mystical world of Photoshop and if you want to download any other photos used in the video, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So first off, you might think we want to add noise, well, go to filter, noise, add noise and you easily can add noise. But here's the thing, this is the worst way to add noise in Photoshop. Why? Because this just gives you one slider which allows you to control just the intensity of noise. Have a look just the intensity, nothing else. It doesn't give you properties like size of the noise, roughness, highlights, so on and so forth. So we are not going to use this. This is the worst way to add noise. Okay, so you're going to hit cancel. So all we need to do is to create a new layer with 50% gray, add noise to that and change the blend mode to overlay. So here's what you need to do. Press Control Shift N. Command Shift N if you're using a Mac and this opens up the new layer dialog box. If you cannot open it, you can always go to layer, new, layer okay shift control n if you're using a mac that would be command shift n and you can name it film grain and mode choose overlay and check fill with overlay neutral color 50 percent gray okay now you cannot see anything but it's still a layer and you can see there's a gray there you cannot see anything why because overlay is a blend mode which deletes everything which is 50 percent gray now let's add noise to it how to add noise to it not filter noise add noise this is interesting. First of all, let's convert that into a smart object. To do that, go to filter, convert for smart filters. Click OK. Now, any filter that you apply to it is re-editable. You can always go back and change the values. So let's go to filter. This is surprising. Blur gallery and choose any of the four or five. Choose field blur. You might be wondering, why am I applying the blur gallery? Here's why. The blur gallery has an awesome noise feature. Have a look. Effects tab, motion tab, and just beside that, there's the noise tab. And it allows you a bunch of controls to add noise to your photos. And you can add that real time. Isn't that wonderful? Now to add noise, you must apply a little bit of blur. But that doesn't matter because it's a flat gray image, right? It's a gray layer. Doesn't really matter how much blur you apply. Now let's increase the amount of noise. And by the way, you can also choose the type of noise you want. Gaussian, uniform and green. We're going to choose green. And let's increase the amount. Make sure this is checked. Okay, this adds a little bit of noise to this. Okay, now this is a huge image, 7,000 into 4,000 pixels, approximately 5,000. So you might have to bump up the amount and the size there. So amount is fine. Increase the size a little bit. There we go. Let's increase it a little more. I'm not sure whether you can see it. Okay, there we go. It's updating. It's making the noise up. Have a look. That's looking so nice. Just look at the amount of controls we have. Let's increase the roughness a bit. Okay, there we go. Look at how that looks. That looks great, right? And you can control the highlights from here and all the properties there. So let's increase the highlights a bit. Now, let me warn you, this is a slow filter. Once you click OK, this is going to take some time to apply. Let's zoom out and have a look how this looks. That looks fantastic. Now, click OK once you're satisfied. And this will take a couple of minutes. Sometimes less than a minute, depending upon the speed of your system, it's doing it pretty quick. So as you can see, the noise has been processed. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. This is the before. This is the after. Now, if you think the noise is too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity. And if you want to change the values, it's simple. You know what to do. Just double click on the blur gallery. It will open that up again and you can change the values accordingly. And I'm not going to do that. Hit cancel. That's perfectly fine. Now that's not complete. You can add a lot more effects to it to make the noise much more visible and give this image a film look. Here's what you need to do. Select the background layer and create a levels adjustment layer, okay? Select the gray white icon and choose levels. Now let's give it a matte or a faded effect. So first of all, we're going to take away the details from the shadows. To do that, take this slider from left to right, okay? This makes the dark areas darker. This makes the bright areas brighter. This controls the midtones, okay? Make the dark areas more darker, just like this, just a little bit of it. And then make the dark areas brighter by using this slider. There we go. This makes the noise much more visible. Have a look. This gives it a really nice film look. Okay, if you can see. So this is the after. This is the before. This is the after. This is the before. You can control it. If you think it's too much, let's decrease it a bit. 
there we go. So that's one of the ways to add noise by using blur gallery. And by the way, you can always go ahead and change the values by double clicking on it. And just remember, you have to apply a little bit of blur. Any kind of blur will do. Field blur, just 15 pixels, anything will do. And you can add those noise features. Now, second way to add noise is really simple, is by using an image, okay? So there are tons of images available online for adding noise. All you have to do, add those images and change the blend mode to overlay. I'm gonna give two images for you to download, links in the description. Those are official Kodak noise presets. So all you need to do, open up those images. So film grain, I'm gonna give two. Let's drag and drop one into Photoshop just above the image and then increase the size and then change the blend mode to overlay and you're done. Let's change the background to something like default so that you can see what's happening. So this adds a little bit of noise. Have a look at the before and after, before, after. And if you wanna increase the size of noise, really simple, increase the size of it, okay? Let's zoom out a bit and increase the size of it. If you wanna decrease the size of noise, decrease it, and that's pretty much it. Now, once you add certain kinds of effects like this, you need to add that matte effect. You need to stylize it a bit. So. Similarly, select the background layer and let's do it this time using curves. And if you wanna go in depth into stylizing, check out the video right here or right here, somewhere on the screen. So let's create a curves adjustment layer. Click on this gray white circle icon and choose curves. And to apply the matte effect using curves, all you need to do, take this last anchor point and drag it up in the line of the diagonal, okay? In the line of this diagonal and that will add the matte effect, okay? Just like this. Or what you can do, you can drag it up a bit and you can give it a U shape, okay? But what I prefer is drag it up in the line of the diagonal. How does that work? If you wanna know more about it, check out the video right here. Detailed explanation of curves, okay. There we go. That looks interesting, makes the noise much more visible. Change the backdrop to black so that you can see. Now let's make it even more punchy. There we go. Interesting, isn't it? Now let's add blue to the shadows. Increase it, give it a matte effect just like the previous one. Just like this. Add some blues. Wow, that looks fantastic. Have a look. The blue really goes with the red lips. Okay, let's open up the RGB again. I think it's too bright. And now have a look. It's too blue, I guess. So let's go back to the blue again and decrease the blues. This much, this much is fine. And now let's make it a little magenta-ish. So let's choose green because green is the opposite of magenta. RGB is the opposite of C, M, Y. R is the opposite of C, G is the opposite of M, and B is the opposite of Y, okay? Green is the opposite of magenta. So let's decrease green a bit and give it a magenta tint. And there we go, have a look at the before and after. So before, after that film effect. Isn't that wonderful? Now let me show you the third and the easiest way to add film grain to your images in Photoshop. It's just a filter, very simple. Make a copy of the background layer, Controller Command J, and convert this into a smart filter because we want to have the ability to change the values later, right? So go to filter, convert for smart filters, and then click OK, and then filter, simple, filter gallery. And inside of filter gallery, there is a filter called film grain under the artistic tab, or what you can do, you can also choose film grain from here. Now, once you add film grain, there's a bunch of things we can do with it. You can increase the amount of grain, right? You can increase the highlight area, just like this, and you can just intensity, so on and so forth. It's a fantastic filter. Once you're satisfied with this, click OK, and we'll process that. Now, you can, if you think it's too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity of this one, and that's pretty much it. Now let's change the background to say black and let's see how that looks. That looks wonderful, isn't it? Now the only drawback of this filter is that you don't have the control over the size, the roughness and all the properties that we had in the first method by using the blur gallery. But here's the thing, it's just one filter. You don't have to add levels, overlay, nothing. It's very simple. So that's how to add grain to your photos in Photoshop and give it a nice film look. Just remember the first way, the blur gallery. Inside of blur gallery, there's a noise. And to apply that, you first need to create a layer, gray, blend mode, overlay, and then add some blur, and then add some noise. Simple. The second way is using an image, which is available for download. Check the links, download that, change the blend mode to overlay. And the third method, very simple, 
the film grain filter inside of filter gallery and that's pretty much it hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating